We are back and these are notable NBA centers. Their three point field goal attempts before this season and their attempts during this campaign. Uh, guys, you big men are free to be three. Right? <laughs> you are free to be. And that's free, where we're going. We're, we're talking in terms of the, the growth of three point shooting among the bigs. And what did we say a couple weeks ago about it? Everybody's, Everybody's doing, doing it. it. Everybody's doing it. Uh, it's been pretty remarkable, Rick, for us to watch the first uh, few weeks of this season, now into December, and to see how many of the guys at the five position are able to step out and comfortably shoot three-point shots, do it at a percentage where you have to start, obviously, respecting the fact that they can hurt you from out there. Yeah, and I, I think of the guys on that list. Well, look, they're some of the best players in the game, let alone they're big men, right? But they're shooting top of the key threes, not, you know, <laughs> shortened corner threes. Some of them are, right? Um, but Marcus saw I remember he had a three game a three uh, three uh, three point makes in a game at the earlier in the season and we made a big deal about it I was like what is this right yeah but he shot I think 73 is already this season and, and and so when you start to think about the the amount of threes that are being taken versus you know the fact that they're just now big men are now starting to take them these guys are making them yeah which makes and, a difference and the fact that it wasn't just that we we watched the Grizzlies on that particular night where we said Oh, wow, uh, Marcus Gasol made some threes today. No, <laughs> watch the next night, and it'll take four more, and then the night after that, three more. So now it's become really a weapon and a part of what it is that offenses are doing, exploring this skill set with these newfound five men, Vince. They're able to do it. No, no question about it. And, and I would say that this, this three-point line has served as a magnet for everyone in basketball now, whether you're a guard or a big man, because it's drawing you yeah, there to try. Or, or go to men's league, because it's happening in the <laughs> men's leagues too. But w the fascinating thing about it, Vince, and we're going to we'll, we'll talk about it, Rick and I, about what this does for your basketball team and the way that your team has to think, because you have the five-man out there, is how much more room uh, it, it opens up for your guards and the guys who off the ball can either cut without the ball and be quick or guys with the ball who are able to split pick and rolls or find seams and still be able to score. So I'm going to walk Rick Fox out here and talk to you about, you know, what it, what it does for your five men out here setting the pick and roll. So Rick will have the ball out there. I'll grab one. And normally what we're taught is, let's, Rick, you're the five man. You're out at the three-point line. The first thing I'll talk about is transition. The, the first order of business for any big, Rick, is they're taught, Rick, you know, Vince, is to run back into the lane, be the anchor on defense, turn around, use your pistols if you like, and find, you know, your man and where the ball is, and then, yeah, and then come over weak side. Well, if, now these five men are out there, right? So your back line of defense for a lot of teams now is that if I'm the five man and I'm in transition, now I'm running all the way out here to cover the ball, and what I'm opening up is the lane for guys, cutters, to go ahead and make plays. Second part of this is this. Rick is my five man. I have the ball, and Vince, you can come and play defense on me. As Rick's coming over here, we're switching a lot in the league, yes? So we're coming off the screen. You're going to switch onto the five man. I've got the big here. The big guy now is popping back to this spot. You're the small guy. Now what he has there is the height advantage. For you as a small to switch out on, let's say it's Porzingis. Yeah. Let's say it's Marcus Gasol. These guys have high release points at 7-1, Anthony Davis. You being there, Vince, you might as well be outside the studio. <laughs> they don't see you at all. You're not disrupting the shot. And now that opens up another weapon for you to score some points. So there's an advantage for that out there as well. I just wonder... Will the bigs ever lose the fiber of who they are? In ter How would that affect them in terms of their overall role uh, in, in the game itself and what we're trying to do? Well, if they don't know what the old fiber of the five man was, so and the fiber that they have shown you is what they're giving you now, then there's no need to recreate or go back and step back and say, you'll need to do this. We're going to need to develop the post-up option for you. One thing that will never leave is the thought process about what a big man does for you defensively in terms of his rim protection and presence around the rim. And so that is one thing that if you're playing a five man at the three point line, it's advantageous to you offensively to pull the five man away. This idea, if Rick has got the ball on the wing, and Vince, 
you're over here, you're the five man, and you're playing in the traditional post mode, and you're down here as you know, DeMarcus Cousins for the Kings and doing some work on the block, and all of a sudden now I'm in a great position to catch any sort of dribble penetration as a big to come over here and contest, block shots, get in the way, and take charges. The, the center position will always have that responsibility. So the Porzingis's, the Carl Anthony Towns, the Joel Embiid's, they're going to have to be well-schooled and educated on what it means to play in here, sure. to use this, and to be around the block. But for the most part, offensively, for them to be exploring this three-point line is a gateway to some incredibly creative offenses and ways to take advantage of defenses that the league has not seen before because they're just that good at shooting a three ball. Well, we talk about the natural evolution once again, and these bigs are loving it because all those tall kids that grew up in their backyard, staying close to the basket and drop stepping and shooting with either hand. Now they're out shooting long distance. They're trying to get their three point shot down. Are, are they not? They, they are, but Spanning? They, they are doing that. And it's not to say that we're encouraging that, but to see the game what it is. is the, the one thing that I want to bring up is that the, the guys that are playing this way, Rick, it's the generation of players that are able to do this. We don't have a lot of guys in that middle road. We don't have those post presence. And it's silly for us to think, Steve Kerr made a great comment, it's silly for us to think that for the league's history that every team has had a dominant post player for, for all time and that we've all of a sudden lost that. No, we've had five or six or if you want to stretch it out, maybe eight all time in the league where everybody was scared of that big man's presence. We don't have those guys so much anymore and what it is that we're seeing from the new generation of bigs is opening up some eyes not only of their opponent but of their coaches for the possibilities and, yes and yes and you bring up a good point the coaches they're still on the sideline they're still policing all of this that that short list of players that are shooting threes like I said again they're some of the best players in the game they're multi they're, they're positionless basketball players that list is in okay we're going to roll the ball out, and every big guy that's over 6'10 can just go out and shoot threes. Now, you'll be on the bench if you're not making threes. Sure. And so I think that's the difference in what Brent is talking about. The guys are added value because they can stretch a defense, but they also, when they come on the defensive end, they're probably guarding someone that's not floating out there on the three-point line. And, that, and that's the rarity of it. So, so this player that we're trying to find right now, you mentioned Porzingis. Mm -hmm. It's Porzingis. It's Anthony Davis. Carl Anthony Towns. Carl Anthony sure. Towns. Yep. Those guys, we're looking for. That's the new. That's the future. That's, well, you where, see, that's you, the present and the future. Well, man, I mean, they're putting the ball on the floor. Yeah. They're rebounding and starting Which fast is great. breaks. And if you think of Marcus Saul, Marcus Saul was always a pop, you know, pick and pop type of center that shot the ball exceptionally well. But from high school, Dean, I mean, college, Dean Smith used to tell us, don't take long twos. So now they've just gotten Marcus Saul to take one three-step foot back, and now he's taking the three instead of the long two. And then you know what, Vince? The last point I'm going to make is. I like the fact that the big man, because of the skill set of those young guys, is finding relevancy in today's game. Yeah. It's just a new defined relevancy at that position. And you know what they say, everybody, everybody's, everybody's doing, doing it. it. Everybody's, everybody's doing it. Peer pressure. <laughs> <laughs>